This is actually my second video on magnets, but I love them so much that I wanted to show you some activities that you could do in addition to that. So this one is gonna be magnets part two. Hey, hey you guys, it's Christina from the Purple Alphabet a long time ago. I keep saying that in my videos a long time ago. I feel like I've been doing YouTube for quite a while, but I do have a video on magnets that was a really like a really simple DIY kind of activity video. So if you're interested in that, after you watch this video, I'll put the link down below in the description box. So you can go and check that video out for even more inspiration. But today I have a new set of activities, plus some new materials that have been sent to me that I wanted to show you. Also, if you are new, go ahead and say hello in the comments. I like it when you guys say hi and let me know that you're here then you can click subscribe because we do educational activities for kids ideas and inspirations to learn through play and I would love to have you be a part of it so you don't miss out and if you're not new make sure you say hi to you guys know I love the comments I read every single one and I will probably respond back to you all right now that we got through all of the formalities you know how you have to do on YouTube right then let's go over to our activities so most of the activities I'm gonna show you in today's video I'm using this kit it was sent to me by ETA hand to mind um, it's a stem kit and it has a bunch of magnets in here and I like that it has everything included you can find these things these tools separately I've found many of them before so you can check that out but I'm just gonna use this because it's all done for me and this one in case you're interested is called the magnet super experiment set nine experiment in here and already 20 tools I want to put it in my Amazon store in case you wanted to go in and check it out with some other resources that you might want to check out too so if you go to my Amazon store I put the link in the description box and all you need to do is look for the magnet magnets list that will have everything that you would need to do many of these experiments. And also after I show you a couple activities, I have some extension activities that I'm gonna show you with some free printables too, right after this. So let me show you this first. It has a little career and lab guide right here. And it's a great little booklet because it shows you all of the experiments step-by-step step, all the way through. There's a lot to do. And I'm gonna pop out some of these other things in here too. So these are our magnet discs and they have the um, both sides of the magnets, which is why some are sticking and why some aren't. This set comes with iron fillings, and so you can buy loose fillings. I've seen that before. These are actually enclosed in these cases, which is nice, so there's two of them. We have two magnetic wands. Magnetic meeples is what these are called, but they are um, basically people, and there are magnets on the bottom of that one. Two roadsters, here's one in orange, and it has the wheels on the bottom. Here's one in green. We have a rod, an end cap, a ruler, and some string. Now that I've showed you everything in the kit, I'm gonna show you some things that you can do with magnets using this kit, or a material similar. The first one is kind of a racing one where you have your two racers here and your meeples. And we're gonna do a little bit of who can go the farthest. Okay, I'm gonna set this up a long ways here. I have my two roadsters. I'm gonna put my little ruler here in between them, kind of right where they start. And pretend like I have imaginary starting line over here. Add in our little meeples, the pink one, the blue one. And then we can start off by adding our magnets to the car. What's really cool is you can see here in this each one of the roadsters they have four different slots that you can add magnets in. magnets and each one of these magnets has two different sides we have the north side and then the south side so you're gonna place one different one for each so I'm gonna put the um, let's see the south side facing out here and then the north side facing out on this one your first experiment is to see what happens if you match up the sides when you place the magnet behind the car will it move so I'm gonna put the um, let's do this one down here first the north side and see what happens on my imaginary line moves just a little bit flip it over and match up my south side and it barely moves and you can do this a couple of times because your kids are probably gonna be very amazed to check it out and see what happens and use the ruler to kind of measure how far it went next since there's multiple slots in the roadsters you can add more of these in there to see if that makes a difference slide these in oops you know what I should have done <laughs> I should have done the pink in this side and the blue in this side because the manics are sticking to each other there we go so now we have two in each one and we can test this out too I'm just gonna use one in my hand did it move a little bit further oh it did and then you can even experiment with multiple of these in your hand so here I have two will it make a difference and you can record your answers. So what we're testing right here, this is magnetic force. So a force is something that pushes or pulls between objects. 
And so the attraction is when objects are pulled together and repulsion is when objects are moved apart. So these are terms that you'll learn. They're all inside your booklet so you don't forget. Magnets are objects surrounded by a magnetic field. So they produce and direct magnetic fields. And the magnetic field is the area where magnetic force operates to push or pull other magnets or objects when they're not touching. So what you're teaching in this lesson is all about magnetic fields even though you are not touching anything when you're doing this experiment. Now if you forgot anything that I've told you, I promise you this is all in your instruction booklet so you'll be able to help teach your kids all about force attraction, repulsion, and magnetic fields. This time I want to use the iron fillings cases. They come two to the set and the magnetic rods that have magnets sticking to them still. So I'm going to shake these so that it just spreads out the iron fillings inside. Then I'm gonna take one of my wands, one of the sides, and then I'm gonna gently kind of put it underneath the case. I'm kind of like I'm spreading butter. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, how the fillings inside are changing. And I'm gonna try the other side, the purple side on this other one. And what we're doing here is, is we're doing some observation of the differences of what those iron fillings do. And in doing so, you can do like a little magnetic notebook, you can do some drawings, you can take notes as to the differences for each side of the magnetic wand. You're gonna be looking at things as far as, you know, are there more fillings lined up? What shape do they seem? What about the patterns? Do they look different on each one of these samples? And and then next, after you observed what happened there, you can take one of the wands and rotate it and see what happens when you see both. So see, you have both sides here of the magnet. So you have one side and you flip it to see what happens when both. So you're gonna see kind of an opposite effect on each side. And what that is, is the magnetic field is flipping basically. And the fillings orient themselves according to the field lines of force. So each time you do that, you're reversing the poles of your magnet and your fillings. On to the next one. We're gonna use a rod. This one uses eight of those discs. A ruler, the string, and that little end cap. So this is another activity that has to do with magnetic force, you know, pushing and pulling, and talking about how it can cause objects to kind of, you know, float when two magnets repel one another, um, even when they don't touch. So this is an observation, an example of that. So we're gonna stand up our, our little rod. We're gonna slide one magnet onto it, all the way to the bottom. We're gonna face another magnet on top of that, facing each other. So this one's yellow, so I'm gonna put the yellow facing it. And see, notice how it doesn't fall all the way down. So what we can do is take our magnet and measure the distance of what that is. In this case, it's two inches. Add a third one, making sure the same color touches. So I have a purple, so now the purple needs to go down. Same thing, that's what happened. You can measure the distance between them now. Now it's one and a half for the bottom and it's one for the top. You can notice, note the difference and then you can see how many you can stack on here without them touching each other. How the force pushes them down the rod. Taking off two, leaving three, you can even add one of these little meeples on here to see what happens. And the, measure the differences between that for the magnetic force. You can even try the pink one. They almost went all the way down there. You can push down, watch it push and force it to go back up. How high does it bounce back up? You can see if you add more magnets on here to see if you can actually make the meatball come off of the rod. Let's see if this works. I added two more. <laughs> yeah, that definitely did it. So you turned it into a launch pad. Or you can do a little activity where you take the string. So for this one, I'm gonna take a string and I'm gonna tie it to the end of this little end cap here. And it goes right on top of the rod. So it looks like this. And then I'll take one of these magnets and tie it on this other end of the string, pretty high up, just so it doesn't hang all the way to the bottom. And then it does say to tape down your little stand here so it doesn't fall over. Then you can measure how far of a distance you can get this magnet to come away from the pole. So what I'm gonna do is put the little measuring stick, the ruler right here at the end and see how far I can make it go. And then I try it with two and to see how far I can make it. About two inches I was able to make the magnet move. Let's try it with two magnets. <laughs> or even three. Oh yeah, it's already moving way out here at three inches. <laughs> nice. 
I've only showed you three activities out of this whole booklet, but there are a total of nine. Lots more things that you can do and try. Plus, even after you've done the activities in here, you can use these magnets in so many different ways that even if you check out the other video to give you some examples, that this kit will take you really, really far. And I'm pretty sure your kids are gonna be amazed and have some fun with it. I wanna show you a couple of extension activities that you can also do. This one is a free printable, and I printed it out in black and white just because I was saving on some printer ink, but it does come in color, so if you prefer color, you can do that. The first sheet is just a sorting mat, so you can cut these out or you can keep them on the sheet. And then the next pages are pictures, so this is, you'd cut them out, obviously. <laughs> this first sheet are things that are magnet, and then this is a sheet that are not magnet. So you would, or magnetic, excuse me. You guys know my words always get fumbled when I'm doing these live things. And, and thanks for pointing out the mistakes and clarifying for me, it's always helpful, but magnetic. So this sheet has things that are magnetic. So you would cut out the shapes excuse me, cut out the cards, you can laminate them too, and these and mix them all up and do a sorting activity on the mats. Now these ones with the pictures are perfect for those who are not readers and who don't know how to read, but if you have people, children, that are readers, there are two sheets on here that have the vocabulary. So this is also really good for um, reading and sight words and whatnot. And if you wanted to, you can also do a match with them, with the pieces. So that is a cool activity. And I think that would go a long way in extending your magnet learning. And then these I thought were amazing. Once again, another free printable. I found these that were come in a set. There's two different ones here. Oh, they're flying all over the place. And they just look like little road maps, right? But you can use these with your little matchbox cards or even your roadsters if you wanted to manipulate them so that they can go on the track. I think the roadsters might be a little bit too big for this. But if you had a little matchbox car, because it is magnetic, you could use that and your little wand to push a car through the track or it all just sticks together. Hold on, let me try that again. Yes, even on the purple alphabet, we do have fails. All right, here we go. Nice. And what's really cool is if you don't use even a map like this, you can make your own little trails, your own little mazes, get some building blocks, put them all up around, get some of those mega brick Legos, make your own track, add your own things, and you can push your cars through the maze. This next printable is to set up different stations. So doing magnet investigations. And I picked this one because it is for a little bit older kids. So if you have some older kids, probably I think it's a third grade and up, this would be appropriate. Uh, we have our just front page here. You can make this into a booklet if you wanted to, or you could cut them apart and just do them for each activity. But it's set up like a book. The first station here, number one, is what's the attraction. So you're testing different items. And then actually this comes with a guide on what items to use if you wanted to. So you have um, a column for attracted and non-attractive, so you can divide out your findings. This one is to see um, how many paper clips that you can balance underneath a magnet before it actually falls off, which could be kind of fun. And you can do that with the different sides of the magnet too. This second station says, test if a magnet can attract paper clip through a variety of materials. So it tells you some suggested materials that you can try and you'll just mark off yes or no. This sixth station is to build a compass. The reason why these are all out of orders because you're supposed to make them into a book. This one is a magnet train. So you line up different magnets to see if you can make it into one long train. There's a section here for your learning summary about what you learned about magnets. And then there's one more activity here. And this is floating magnets. This is kind of similar to that little experiment we did with the magnets on that pink pole in that kit that I showed you. It's a very similar one using those same type of magnets on a pencil. So I'm gonna put this one down in the description box too in case you wanted something just a little bit more meatier, I guess, a little bit more in depth to work on, especially if you're a homeschooler and you wanted to make this into a full on lesson plan. What'd you think of those? Let me know down below. And if you have any thoughts or ideas that you think that I should do a video on, let me know about that too. I would love to hear your opinions. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.